What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Behind Bars podcast. As always, I am Adi84, your bartender and host of this fine program. Today, we're going to talk about a few things, actually. We're going to talk about uh, what we're in front of us. We're going to compare three of the country's major light beers. Uh, We're going to compare them by taste. We're going to compare them by uh, what they look like, color, um, smell, and everything in between. We're going to do this. Towards the end of the show, this would be our beer taste of the day, and I figured I just had three of these laying around the house from a party. You might as well test them out and kind of see what you like. I have my personal favorite, and I don't know why, and I've never done this before, but Miller is my favorite Miller Lite. I don't, but I go one, two, then Bud Light is my least favorite, and it's always been that way. Although I really do like a Bud Wiser um, ahead of. The Coors or the Miller regulars, but uh, just a preference. But we'll we'll, uh, we'll pour them out. We'll compare it with color. And we'll see how it is. Also, today in the show, I want to talk about a little bit about tip certification and why it's so important to be tip certified and go through the program and everything like that. And uh, we'll be talking about that first. But most of all, if you like this program and you like any of these segments, please subscribe. Leave your comments below. What you think um, of these shows? Add your two cents. Uh, as well, to give you a little rundown about myself, I've been bartending for about 20 years now, working in the food industry for about 25, give or take years at this point. So uh, I know a little bit of a little bit about everything inside a restaurant, but whether it's fast service or whether it's uh, you know full service. Um, so I kind of just want to share my thoughts and stories on this podcast of everyone and kind of. Give you a little in-depth of what I personally think my opinion on certain things are. Maybe yours is a little bit different, but as I've learned over the years, the more I do this job, the more I learn, and the more I realize what things are actually good and what things are actually bad and things that are a waste of time and all that stuff. But one thing that I used to think was a waste of time, but as the years went on and as I understood the process and laws and regulations and got more into the management aspect of, of this job and understand how restaurants work and bars work is the tip certification program um, that every server bartender should go through once a year. Most restaurants will actually pay for you to take the test. Um, it takes about three hours of your life. I'll be honest with you, they haven't changed much on the test year after year. It's basically the same program. But what it does is just kind of brings back memories and kind of Get you more familiarized with the responsibility of serving alcohol, right? A lot of people get into this job thinking it's just fun. You're hanging out a bar, you make some quick money, serving beers to people who haven't socialized, uh, socialized and have a good time, which is by far most of the job, in fact. I would say probably 75% of the job is socializing, engaging with the customer, um, and just doing a really good job of just keeping people there and keeping people entertained. 25% of it comes down to actually making the drink, because anyone can make a drink at the end of the day, right? And, um, you know, knowing the laws and knowing, you know, restrictions and when to serve someone and when not to serve. So over the years, you would take these tip certification tests every single year. And in the beginning, I'd be like, why am I doing this? I already know the rules, yada, yada, yada. But then, in fact, as you do it more and you're in the job longer and longer, you realize... Sometimes you just need some freshen up on stuff. You know, it's not every day you're going to shut someone off. Some bars you may work at where you're shutting people off on a nightly basis. There are some bars you work at you'll probably never shut people off. You know, I've been through phases of certain places I've worked where every week there was a situation. We had to deal with it. And then I also went through some phases where I went six months without having a situation. And it all knows, it all goes about how to handle said situation as well, okay? So it's not just shutting a person down because they're drinking too much or you're, they've been over or anything. It's more or less how to handle the situation in a way which you won't cause any confrontation and to really, you know, diffuse the situation from being any larger than it really is at that particular time, right? So obviously someone's over serving. You don't want to come to them abruptly. You don't want to be angry with them. You want to kind of talk them down kind of nicely. You know, you wait till they're done drinking the drink, right? You don't tell them it's their last drink while well, I give them a drink because that can cause some problems. You know, as they're getting down to the end of the drink, and you pretty much show this is it for the person, you'll give them the benefit of the doubt to know that for themselves. And that's the process I usually do. I know it's the last drink I'm going to serve the person, but I'm not going to tell the person right there. I'm going to let them finish their drink, and I'm going to see if they go for their card and close the tab out. Because if they can do that on their own, 
then you've done nothing. You've, you've solved the problem right there. You know, they've been over-served. All you got to do is make sure they're getting home all right. And if they're Ubering or whatever like that, you're good. If they're driving, you may want to take some concussion, uh, precautions on how they're going to get home. Maybe get them a cab. Maybe, you know, that's the next conversation you have. So if they close the tab off by themselves, boom, you're done. Nice and easy. Now, if they ask for another drink, this is where you have to go and be creative in ways to basically um, have a conversation with someone without them getting angry and kind of talking them down. So you kind of, you want to diffuse the situation, you want to make it as light as possible, like, yeah, I'm not allowed, yada, yada, yada. Everyone has their stories, and you could ask every bartender, and they have a per particular way of doing it that causes uh, very little uh, problems, you know. What you don't want to do is become very, uh, you know, brash with them and start screaming and yelling and being angry and rude to them because that's just going to anger a drunk person further. You don't need that. That's the last thing you want to do in a situation like this. So um, these are things to think about. And this is something that the TIP certification kind of goes over with you, uh, which is very, very good to remember and know because if, especially if you're a new bartender and you really don't know how to defuse the situation. I've worked with many bartenders, especially younger people who just came on the bar for the first time, didn't know how to handle someone who's been drinking too much or how to shut a person down. And it requires you to have a, you know, a few balls to go up there and kind of do what you got to do um, and the process of doing it, whether you're allowing, you're alerting your management staff or your bar manager at the time or another bartender. You want to make sure you let the servers know. So stuff like this is taught in the, in the tip certification. So that's why it's, it's one of the things that's very, very good about these tests you take every year. This keeps you fresh on the manner of doing this. It also keeps you fresh on you know, how much alcohol is in certain alcohols, right? So if you're drinking light beers all night, you're going to have different effects of a person than if you're drinking hot alcohol all night, right? Things to think about, right? Also, what kind of foods you can give a person to help them in their situation to maybe sober them up a little bit so they're not so, you know, at that drunk level of intoxication, right? Whereas if you give them some certain foods, those will also bring down the alcohol and uh, alcohol in their body faster and get them to the point where they can be a little more sober and, you know, give them the ability to, you know, be able to leave on their own. Um, and you're always worrying about the people that make sure they're getting home right or uh, getting home all right and all that stuff too. So there's a lot of things that go into it and the tip certification class is actually very, very helpful in this. So if your company is requiring you to take it, I think most restaurants in the state of Massachusetts, at least where we are, require the servers, at least the bartenders, to take these tests on a yearly basis to freshen up on them. I think it helps with their insurance. It's, it's literally three hours of your life, but you'll learn tons of stuff in these tests that you'll never forget. And even if you do forget a little bit, the next year when you take the test, it will kind of come back to you. I mean, I can almost do this test standing on my head at this point. But there's still a few things that I always forget, you know, when it comes to what organs process certain things and, um, you know, quick math on alcohol content and how many you drink and stuff like that. You just need a refresh course on, which is very useful. So in that case, I would say anytime you have an opportunity to take a, um, you know, test like that or any refresher course of that matter, take advantage of it, especially if your company is doing it for free. Um, because... It's only going to help you in the long run, and it's not going to hurt you. It's just going to make you better, a better person. You know, so things to think about um, in the course of training. And also, as I always say, in, in, this, in the sense of training, um, you know, listen to your older bots and listen to people who've done it for a while. They know better than anyone else. You may think you know everyone, everyone or everything, I should say. You may know everyone, but you know, may not know everything. And those are the people you want to kind of listen to. People do it for a while. A lot of them are little know a little beat down a little bit from doing it for so many years and people are just kind of you know some of them are just doing it because they have to do it and not because they enjoy doing it but you want to get from a person who actually enjoys doing it who's been doing it for a while they'll be the most accurate on giving you you know correct uh, ways to handle situations and all that stuff so something to think about as well when you uh, are looking for advice on you know just bartending skills in general right so two things right there. Listen to people who know what they're talking about. And tip certification is not a bad thing. It's annoying, but it'll help you in the long run. It really will. And, you know, you may use one or two of those drills, you know, the entire time you bought 10. But at the end of the day, um, knowing that when you did know it, it helps. It's like uh, anything else. It's like the insurance policy for anything else, right? You may never use your insurance, but, you know, the day you need your insurance is the best day for it, right? So that goes to that little spiel right there on tip certification. I only think this because mine's coming up pretty soon that I have to take. And I'm starting to kind of get into that mind um, of how I approach it every single year. So, okay. With that said, we're going to move on to the next segment of the show. And we're going to test these three 
major light beers, most popular light beers. Probably if someone says a light beer, other than like a Corona or something like that, um, these are the ones that people are talking about. So these are twist tops. So, but they're always a little tough sometimes. So we're gonna do the Bud Light first. We'll pour that into this first glass over here. And then we'll do the Miller. And then we'll do the course. Now, years ago, these companies were all completely different, but nowadays, um, Coors and Miller are owned by the same company, although the beers are different, the formulas are different, and stuff like that, but just something to keep in mind, too. So, the first thing I notice when you're looking at the color, and I'm not sure if this is something that you'll be able to see on the film, but definitely compare the Miller to the Bud Light. The Bud Light is in this hand right here. The Miller definitely has a darker, more... Um, you know, barley color tone to it. And when you compare the two, the Miller Light and the Coors Light, very similar in their color palette right there. So those two are very uh, similar into what they look like color wise. Now, aroma wise, let's see. The Bud Light definitely has a unique Bud Light taste, or I should say at least a smell to it. If you close my eyes, I could probably tell you this was a Bud Light just from all the years of pouring it and drinking it. As for the Miller, the Miller is a lot, has a lot less of a scent to it. The Bud Light is, the aromas are definitely stronger. The Miller Light is more subtle. You really get to go in there and bring some oxygen to it a little bit. And you really got to get into it, but it doesn't have a unique smell that's different than the Bud Light. It's less as strong as the uh, Bud Light. Now, as for the Coors, the Coors is a little stronger in scent. I would say scent-wise, Bud Light, Coors, a Den Miller. Color-wise, between the two, I'm going to have to give it to the Miller as well. So Miller, Coors, and then Bud Light for color. So those are the biggest physical things you see right off the bat between these three bears. Um, I just printed out a little information about these bears. As useful as it is, I don't know. But, um, you know, Bud Light, for example, hops, barley, malt, and rice are the main ingredients. Um, for the Miller, let's see, it's a light lager style. These, these websites don't really give you much uh, information on their product. Uh, it's, it's funny because you get more information off these, like, uh, these, these, these fancy beers that you would like from a, uh, like from a brewery and stuff like that. They, they have a little more information than these very popular beers that we drink all the time. But uh, just one thing off the top for the alcohol content, and I'm not sure if they actually even post it on the bottles anymore. They used to. I'm not seeing it on the Bud Light. I were to guess, I'm going to say, oh, there it is right there. So this is 4.2 4 on the Bud Light. Uh, the Mela, I thought I actually had somewhere. I want to guess it's probably around the same, 4.2-ish. That's uh, right here, 4.2. And the course is also 4.2. So alcohol content, both the same. So now you're not drinking it one more for the alcohol. Now you're drinking it basically for taste, right? So at the end of the day, um, when you're thinking about these products, they're all the same alcohol, they're all the same type of beer, they're all light lager. Um, and Miller was the first of the light lagers, I believe, of these three. Um, and then the other two just follow the suit along the other way. But here's the thing at the end of the day is, they are just basically a light version of their, of their, uh, you know, solid or light version of their flagship beer for the most part, right? So you have Miller Light is the lighter ver uh, version of the Miller High Life, champagne of beers. Coors Light is the lighter version of Coors, the banquet beer, and of course Bud Light is the lighter version. Of Budweiser. Um, 
So if you like the primary one, which is funny because I like the Budweiser a lot better than I do say um, the High Life or the Banquet Bear, but I do prefer the Miller Lite better, mostly because of the flavor profile of it, better than the other light beer. So let's try, we'll go from the least, my opinion, flavorful to the most flavorful by just basically these quick little steps here. So this is the Bud Light. I'm gonna bring a little bit, I'm gonna actually bring a little more beer in there to kind of get the combination going a little bit. Um, Nice, decent head with a pour, not terrible. Um, these light beers don't really have much head to them, so they're kind of flat at the sense. So even when you're pouring them in the, on a, a giraffe, the head will settle very quickly. So you're not gonna ever pour these with a nice, thick head. It's gonna be a very subtle beer. So with that said, okay, not bad. It literally is a lighter version of the Budweiser. And if you drink the light and the Budweiser at the same time, you would just see a distinct taste. It's more of a flavor profile of the actual Budweiser itself. The lighter beer is a watered down version of the beer. Alcohol contents are both the same. It's just the flavor is what you're lacking on it, right? Basically, you're really pulling away some of the flavor to bring down the calorie count that you would get from, I believe, the Bali, right? Not terrible. I mean, it's a serviceable light beer. What are you going to do, right? I mean, some people aren't overwhelmingly big on beer taste. It's an acquired taste you learn over the years. So Bud Lights and other light beers like that are more up their alley, which is understandable. Um, some people rather prefer a more tasty beer. I prefer all types of beers, all different ideas of beers. I like ones of taste. I like ones of really, you know, um, shop profiles, if you will. Um, color profiles. It all depends on my mood. I like sometimes to pair my beers with my food. Excuse me. So I'm already getting burped from this. So that's one thing to think about as well. So now we'll move on to my the middle one for me, the cause. Now, when I was a kid, we started drinking for the you know in our early twenties. I'd always was a Bud Light person, and I had my buddies were one of the other two. And it wasn't until I got a little bit older that I stopped really liking the Miller Light. And it's something my grandfather had drank for all these many years was Miller Light. Um, so I finally, you know, tried one. I was like, well, this is way better than the other two. So I kind of got stuck with this for a little while. So this is probably about, you know, since 2009, Miller Lite has been my, my go-to. But right now we're going to try the cause. Same idea. Head, not too great. Um, middle Roma. Middle, a little bit darker than, a little bit lighter than the Miller. Still pretty good color profile to it. Nice golden crisp color to it. Good smell to it. Not very overwhelming, but very subtle. Yep. Now, right off the bat, between the two, the Bud Light has more of a shopper aftertaste to it that I've noticed. Not it's not extreme, more just something noticeable, you know? At the very end, you get a hint of the flavor at the end, whereas a Coors is more like a water. It's very smooth. You're getting the flavor of the Bali, but it's not really overwhelming you a little bit, you know? Not bad at all. Nice, refreshing beer on this Monday afternoon, right? Last but not least, we're gonna go explore the Miller Lite. And like I said, my favorite of the three. We'll add a little bit more in there, get a little more carbonation onto it. Um, as you can see, the head, but about the same. Um, might be lasting a little bit longer, a little more foamy, which is nice. Uh, smell, not as sharp, if I believe smell Driven ones out of the three, I think I already said that. This is disorder, more of a shop smell, middle to less. The color, definitely the darkest between the three. Definitely have the most color to it, most golden color to it. All right. It almost looks like a, an amber kind of look to it, like a dinosaur from Jurassic Park. Remember those guys? It's crazy, right? There you go, nice smooth finish. So, whereas... The Bud Light has a weird, not a weird, but a unique aftertaste to the taste to it. And the Coors really has no taste to it. You just get the hints of the hops and the barley. The Miller has more of a full package to it. It's a, it's a heavier beer in the sense of color, right? So it feels like you're drinking more of something iconic, I guess, um, more than a watery down light beer, right? Um, the smell is not completely overwhelming, but you can tell it's there. And the taste is very, very 
driven. It's a very smooth go-to taste. Now, like I said, Miller is my preference, so I'm a little biased between the three of them. But I've been through phases in my life where I drank all three of these beers at any given time. Um, some other beers to explore, which I don't know if they still make, is the Bud Select, um, which essentially, to me, my personal opinion, is kind of a, a hybrid between a Bud Light and a Bud Heavy. When I was in college, we used to go to a bar called Punters down the street from my college, and we used to call it the Bud Medium, where we'd have the bots in to pour half a Budweiser and half a Bud Light. Um, kind of just watered down the Budweiser a little bit, kind of made it... I don't know what the point was. The flavor, it, we, we, you kind of lost flavor on it. So you weren't really saving flavor on it. And I don't know if it was a calorie thing, but we just asked them to do anything. I think we're just being ironic. But the Bud Select is basically something similar to that. Um, that is the only one I know of between these. I know they have a Bud Ice, Bud Light Ice, right? Which is uh, like a few more, I think it's like 6 to 7% alcohol to it. So it's a, it's, a Bud, it's a Bud Light with more alcohol to it. And um, I had those years ago. Uh, probably 14, 12 years ago. That was, it's not bad. I mean, if you want a beer for a little more boost to it, like a lot of us, if you've been drinking beers a long time, you know, to get a nice, decent buzz, it takes a few um, of these light beers to get you going. But uh, the Bud, I believe it's Bud Ice, correct me if I'm wrong, is the one that's basically a Bud Light with uh, a little more boost to it. So that's all I have to say about that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Behind Buzz comparing. Um, Three Bud Light, th- yeah, three light bears, Bud Light, Miller Light, and Coors Light, um, and describing their flavor profiles, smells, tastes. Uh, all of them are available. Wherever you find one, you're going to find the other two. This is, these bears always travel in packs of three. Every gas station, liquor store, convenience store will have all three of these bears at any time. Whether they have bottles or cans, it depends on the place selling them. I pre- always prefer a bottle for my beer. I feel it has better taste. I feel like the metallicness of the aluminum is not part of the equation since we're using glass bottles to uh, do this test and not cans. Um, with that said, um, we all have our preferences, so I'll be curious to see what you guys prefer and why you prefer that better. So leave the comments below. Let me know what you think uh, about these three of the most common light um, ales you know um so uh or uh at least i think they're, they're technically lagers i'm sorry not eels these are light light lagers so um whereas they're stronger kind of uh, lagers as well just not the light variety so so bakken right here you know these all all three of these companies at one point in time really had some interesting marketing you have the silver bullet right it's cause light Bud Light with their uh, crazy marketing campaign um, uh, with like you know, the frogs and all those stuff over the years, right? And then you had Miller Time. It's Miller Time, right? So they all went through their phases of, uh, of basically advertising. They're very household names. If you ask anyone what any of these three bears are, they typically will know what they are. So that was just my perspective on this, this uh, little experiment today, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, also we went over today about, uh, tip certification and learning things in general, learning things from other bartenders, learning things from these, uh, yearly tests you have to take to, uh, prefer to perfect your art to a better, uh, level. Um, it doesn't hurt. It just makes you better. And I honestly think, like I said, it's not something you want to fight. It's not something you want to kind of embrace and take in and it'll only help you in the long run. So, um, thank you guys all for watching and I hope you enjoyed this episode of uh behind the buzz and uh if you're enjoying the show subscribe and uh please like every other show that's on the mass hole sports network several shows on there so it'll probably be something for you to enjoy so uh until then stay safe drink responsibly and we'll see you guys next week on the behind the buzz podcast see you guys later bye